I'm delighted to say we're joined by Kurt Mafflin, the last three times finalist John Higgins' is conqueror in the second round. And how does it sound to be a quarter finalist in the Betfred World Seeker Championship? Well, look, I didn't think it was going to. I didn't think it was going to happen anytime soon, to be honest. But you know, it sounds great. Just talk us through that final frame. Obviously, you're in the ascendancy. Then just that mist red to the middle pocket. What was going through your mind at that moment? Do you know? I really frazzled myself, really, because I should have gone for the plant. There was a plant there which John actually potted after I missed that red, but my mind just weren't quite clear. And I thought, look, you snooker players prefer just to go for a single ball pot rather than a plant. And uh, once I missed it, I thought, oh, here we go again. He's going to nick this frame again. There's going to be 12 each. I can't do it. So, uh, no, I, I was just I was just delighted to play a good safety shot and he, he messed one up. I mean, from the early stage, obviously, you had your nose in front for most of the game. But then when John took the lead 11-10, again, yeah. we've seen it so many times from him down the years. Uh, he just managed to steal those, those really tight frames and it looked like he was going to go on again. But fair play to you. You stuck it to your guns and you come through. Yeah, I thought, look, you just got to give it everything you got. Look, I mean, it's going to be at least a year again before you can get to this stage. And I thought, look, just go for your shots. Just do what you do best, really. And that's, and that's go, go for the hard shots. If they go in and I make breaks, then that's the, you know, I win. If, if they don't, I lose. And I thought, look, don't leave anything in the locker. Just, just, just put it all out there. I mean, it was fantastic clearance. Once the frame ball had been, had been potted after that, it was absolutely stunning to watch the clearance in that final frame. Yeah, yeah, I felt I just felt good, you know. The arm was loose, and I was just, you know, I was I was giggling inside basically. And just going back to early on in the day, of course, this morning, I know it's such a small part of the game, but it was a great achievement that one four seven uh, from mm. John. That obviously, how what was going through your mind at that stage? Obviously, I wanted him to make it, you know. Uh, once he got past 72, 73, I thought, yeah, go on and make it. Uh, I was actually really glad the interval come. Because it went to, what was the score at that stage? It would have been 7-5. I had a good chance to go an 8-4 up, which I, uh, I messed up. So I was, I was quite happy that he didn't come at that time. And I thought, well, you know, that's not too bad for me because it looked like he was getting on a bit of a roll, you know. And once he starts queuing, well, obviously he can rail three, four frames off in no time. So, yeah, I thought, well, you know, I've had time to just 15, 20 minutes to chill out and come back. And I think I took the next frame, actually. So, uh, yeah, all good. I've been reading interviews, obviously, you've got this massive belief coming into this year's World Championship. But obviously, the, yeah. it's very strange times going around the world. But you said it's kind of been a blessing because you've got to practice with some of the top players. Yeah, I mean, obviously, I spend, I spend some of my time as well in Norway. My wife and kids are back there. Uh, but it was after the Championship League, which was like, I don't know how long ago that was now, two months, ten weeks ago. I could, there was no point going back to Norway because there was quarantine and then coming back over here there was quarantine so you know I said I phoned, I phoned my wife and said look it's probably better I just stay and put some hard practice in so uh, it's paying off yeah I, I practiced with Bingham and Neil Robertson Barry Kyron Jimmy White so I've had a lot of batch practice and a lot of good solid practice as well it might be hard for him. I'm actually glad you did. Now you're into the quarterfinals. Uh, just looking ahead to that quarterfinal, obviously, last time you were at the Crucible, it could have been, you were so close to beating Mark, so it could have been a second-round clash with Antti and McGill. Maybe that's a bit of fate that you might see him in the quarterfinal. Yeah, maybe it's fate. You know, maybe we're supposed to play here. So, uh, yeah, like I said, I don't mind which one it is. Let's just, let's just play. Whoever gets the 13 first wins. And obviously, it could be Jamie Clark after an incredible first-round performance for himself. Yeah, he played really well against Mark Allen. From what I saw, I didn't see the whole game, but I saw probably five or six frames. I thought he'd done, you know, astonishing, really, uh, as a debut as well. So, yeah, it's gonna, you know, McGill's going to have a tough game tomorrow. You've got a few days now to let it sink in. You're back on the base on uh, Monday. Well, what's in the, the immediate agenda? Well, it's my birthday in a couple of days, so uh, I won't be doing much for that either. I'll just be, you know, I'll get one of the boys to... Uh, best mate to make me a steak and I'll just watch watch some snooker but I'll just be floating about doing a bit of practice uh, have a stroll around town get a coffee I won't be doing anything special just try and get enough rest as well at the same time you know well it's some early birthday present isn't it a quarter final place then in the Betfred World Snooker Championship congratulations Kurt cheers pal thanks Betfred proud sponsor of the World Snooker Championship